Okay, let's we start. Let's start the presentation. So, uh, thanks for joining the session. My name is Bing Yang. Uh, I'm the software engineer, works for uh, Intel Corporation based in Shanghai. So, today I will introduce our uh, professor, Ned. Host, uh, hosting multiple uh, inactivity physical clients on single computing platform. So this is the agenda. We will introduce uh, why we try to raise this proposal and uh, the background and use case behind the proposal. Firstly, and then we will go to go through the architecture and uh, uh, go through the detailed implementation of our solutions. And then we will provide a, a real use case and uh, give a summary. Okay. Uh, Okay, as we know, the Android has, is, has be, become, is the most popular operating system in the world. Uh, in most of cases, Android, Android OS is used in the mobile phone and tablet and the TV. Uh, but due to the uh, rich ecosystems and many, uh, many of the, uh, the application developments, Android systems have been used as spread to some imaging use cases such as cloud gaming and automotive and uh, retail. The first, page, the first picture is automotive. Uh, uh, in the modern cars, there was a lot of displays uh, installed uh, in the car to, uh, to uh, give the uh, car passengers uh, uh, entertainment service. Uh, for example, uh, uh, in a concept car uh, provided by Audi, there was uh, 17 displays in the one car. Uh, every car uh, will, uh, need to, every display needed to uh, provide uh, independent uh, interaction to different uh, passengers at the same time. So, uh, so, so this is the first uh, use case. The second is cloud gaming. Cloud gaming is trying to run the uh, games on the cloud and uh, rendering and encoding and send the uh, encoding streaming to the um, user's uh, mobile device. Use the uh, use uh, cloud gaming solutions. It can let user it provide the user experience run anywhere at any time, and it also can reduce the effort to distribute and maintain uh, uh, new games. And for the Android games, which is uh, which occupy a big uh, important in the uh, game market. Uh, for example, in China. Uh, more than 50% of the games is uh, Android uh, games. And uh, most of the game developers, game campaigners, uh, follow the rule, uh, strategy that uh, mobile first. So Android cloud gaming is also an important topic, or important use case for, uh, for Android. For retail, retail is a sad uh, use case. Uh, as we know, Alibaba and Marvin raised a new concept about the new retail and uh, free stuff retail. In this retail store, uh, there was a lot of display which provided the checkout service and uh, advertisement service to the customers. Uh, users can interact with the different display at the same time to reduce the uh, service duration. So, um, so th this is a sad use case. The fourth use case is a robot. The service robot is also very hot in China, especially for the education at the home and the guide service at the hospital or the, uh, or the, uh, the bank. So uh, traditionally, the service robot is, provide, is included two OS. One is uh, ROS OS, which is used to connect the sensor data and control the robot. And the other is the Android, which is try to interact with the customers and accept the command from the customers and uh, uh, control the robot uh, ROS OS and uh, get the feedback to the customers. So all of use cases uh, try to leverage the bigger uh, ecosystems of Android and also raise some new requirement. Behind the use cases, we can find it requires assistance to service different users at the same time without interfering with each other. And the second, 
point is uh, it requires a system to support a mixture uh, different Linux based OS. So this is uh, our point. Okay. So uh, to, to satisfy the requirement behind the use cases, the easiest solution is just use multiple devices. You can use a lot of devices to serve different customers. One, you, one device serves one user. It is the quickest solutions and it, can not, it will not bring any software development effort. But it will also bring high cost and complexity. Let's take the example as, uh, as I mentioned uh, in the first page, the uh, concept car. If we use, uh, uh, if the car has 17 displays, we use uh, uh, an Android-based device to back every de for power every display. It means we need to install 17 displays in the car, which bring high cost for the hardware and uh, bring bigger effort uh, about the management because you need the update, you need to do the security update, you need to do the uh, OTA update for all devices. So this is, the, this is solution one. The solution two is uh, enhance the Android framework. Of course, we can change the Android framework to support multiple displays to let, your user, to let the Android to support different users uh, to in actions uh, at the same time. But uh, it also can achieve the highest uh, performance because he can support, uh, he can support uh, multi users of, at the, the framework layer. But it also bring bigger effort uh, to implement this feature because uh, you need to uh, modify the, a lot of source code in the Android OSP. For example, the AMS, uh, act Activity Manager Service, the UMS, the User Manager Service, and the PMS, uh, package manager service, and uh, even you need to uh, change the uh, window manager service. So a lot of source code should be touched and uh, modified. And it also brings a bigger maintain effort because uh, it is hard to persuade Google to accept these patches. So you need to maintain these patches uh, because uh, Android will be upgraded every year. So you need to uh, maintain the bigger effort. You, there is a bigger effort to maintain these patches from one desert to any other desert. And the last one is uh, low isolation. Because uh, the multi-display and the multi-user supported in the framework layer, it means it's hard to isolate, provide a strong isolated to the uh, different customers. It's hard to provide uh, different QoS to different customers. Maybe there is a, uh, uh, high property users want to get a better uh, user experience. It is hard to implement in modification solutions, Modi uh, framework uh, enhanced solutions. So, uh, so based on the, these uh, conclusions, we raised uh, our solutions. We try to consolidate the Android workload on a single completing for on using container solutions. So uh, with these solutions, uh, we choose, uh, we, we will run a single kernel, and based on the single kernel, there was a, a different Android instance, use-based stack, uh, isolated by the container, by the namespace, and uh, uh, C group. And uh, this solution can reduce the hardware co cost because uh, only one computing platform can support uh, a lot of users at the same time. And it also can reduce the development effort because uh, we avoid the bigger modification in the OSP, in the framework. Uh, uh, the third uh, 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 benefit is uh, reduce the maintain the management effort because uh, most of the modification is out of the Android uh, OSP. So we can upgrade our uh, solutions from N to P, from P to Q quickly. So, uh, Comparing with some visualization solutions, we also can provide some good performance because we just isolate the process in use the C group and namespace. So our performance should be near the native performance. So the last is the scalability. We can support different, more Android instances at a single computing platform. Okay, this is uh, the, our solutions. 
when we see the arc for our architecture for our solutions. The right figure introduced uh, the hardware and the software. Uh, from the figure we can see there is a single uh, computing platform which include uh, some pre-built hardware such as the USB controller, display controller, GPU and CPU and Ethernet. And uh, we also have some external L devices uh, such as uh, HDMI cable and USB cable and uh, HDMI audio. So that US, the external hardware I'll, our devices are connected to the hardware uh, computing panel phone directly through the HDMI port or USB port. So based on our computing panel phone, uh, we use a single kernel to host uh, different Android instances. There are four Android instances, uh, which, can be, which will be isolated by each other. So every Android instance will be assigned to a dedicated set of external hardware IOs. For example, the instance, Android instance one will be assigned to the, the left uh, display and the left uh, USB touch. So with this assign, the, dif the different user can interact with, interact with different uh, Android instance through the different uh, IO, uh, IO devices. <coughs> with <coughs> the customers, uh, don't uh, aware uh, they, are, uh, they are interacted with a single computing platform. So besides the uh, Android instance, we also have the have a instance manager, which will, which will be responsible for the life controlling of the life cycle of the Android instance. For example, it will be used to start, stop, uh, pause, resume the, uh, Android, the dedicated Android instance. It also can be uh, checked the status of Android instance. Based on the field, uh, based on this arc, uh, we can see we can support. Uh, we can uh, Android is uh, only one Linux-based OS. We can support any different Linux-based OS. For example, the ROS, the uh, Yakto, and Ubuntu on the single kernel, and uh, we implement. Uh, we integrate our instance manager and the Android instance with the Docker and the Kubernetes. So it can be uh, easy to deploy it and the management through the cloud and the Docker command. And, uh, and the one thing I want to, it's worth thing to noting is that our solution is, uh, our, we have extended our modification out of from LCP. Uh, we implement uh, most of the, uh, our modification in the hardware, uh, hardware, uh, hardware adapter layer, so which is out of from LSP and the kernel. As we know, hardware is maintained by the vendor and SOC and the hardware vendor. Uh, LSP is maintained by the Google and the kernel is maintained by the Linux Foundation. And LSP is uh, code will be upgraded uh, uh, once, uh, once a year, and the kernel will be updated quickly. So, with our design, we with our no intrusive design, we can move most of the. Uh, we decouple the, our solution from LSP and uh, kernel, so that uh, we can upgrade our solution quickly. So we, will, we have introduced the ARC for our solutions. So of course, because for different uh, use cases, maybe we have different uh, uh, feature set in our uh, architecture. For example, for the cloud gaming, it is different for the use case for the LTG. For the cloud gaming, there is a later IO devices. The most important is the density and the GPU, uh, GPU rendering. So, so the arc maybe have uh, architecture maybe have some small changes. So we will go through our implementations. We will introduce the container uh, kernel modification and uh, I/O virtualization and uh, LSP modification. So as we introduced at the beginning, the most uh, important technology we uh, our solution based on is the container. Container is. Uh, it's a combination of the namespace and the C group. What is the namespace? The namespace is the 
feature provided by kernel, which, which can be used to isolate a set of process. So it includes the uh, file namespace, uh, uh, network namespace, uh, mountain namespace, and uh, IPC namespace, and PID namespace, and blah, blah. And uh, so with the uh, namespace, uh, we can isolate uh, different Android instances, USB, uh, USB stack by each other. So the one process uh, in container one can't be communicated with the uh, process two in container two. Without uh, uh, the, yes, and the C group is uh, any, any other technology provided by kernel. It provides a solution to uh, assign a different uh, resource, such as CPU and memory, to different namespace. For example, uh, you, you can uh, assign uh, maybe 400 memory to the container one and uh, 2, 2 GB memory to the container two. With container support, we can provide a different property to the different Android container. So that we can, maybe we can give more uh, importance to the, uh, the had some, some instance and uh, give low importance to the other instance. So this is the modification in kernel. So um, as we know, the binder is the most important uh, module in the Android, uh, which is uh, uh, being the, uh, the kernel, mo and it provides the service to uh, Android's uh, process for the communication. For example, if the process uh, one want to communicate with the process two in, uh, one in Android uh, world, it uh, needs to send a message to the binder, and the binder will transfer the message to the process two. So in the orange design, the binder doesn't support a multi android instance. So the straightforward solution is just to modify the source code of the binder and add, maybe we can add a data structure uh, such as a list into the binder source code and uh, map the, uh, every node in the data list to an android instance. Uh, we made a POC, but it brings a lot of modification in the kernel. It uh, bring about uh, one thousand source code in the kernel, which is hard to maintain and uh, upgrade. So we choose a different solution. We create a multiple uh, binder instance, binder device node in the kernel, and uh, we assign different uh, binder uh, node device to different Android instance. With this solution, no modification in Android OSP is required. It is a very clear solution. So uh, the, uh, on the other hand, the different binder are then to different uh, Android instance. It means the isolation between different uh, uh, between the different uh, Android instance is better. So with the, with this solution, we just only modify uh, ten lines of code to enable the multiple binders. So. As we know, for the most, uh, for the IoT use cases, the most is uh, IO virtualization solutions. So we, we group uh, all IO devices into two parts, one, two, two types. One is the dedicated IO devices, and the other is the shared IO devices. For the uh, dedicated IO devices, which means the HDMI display, HDMI audio, and the USB camera, and uh, USB touch or keyboard. Uh, these the IO devices are, are assumed that uh, it will be assigned to for different uh, Android instances. So uh, we we extend the UMD to assign to different uh, uh, to, to assign to different uh, dedicated IO devices for different uh, to different uh, Android instances. So for the shared IO devices such as uh, graphics, uh, video, trusting uh, sensor. We add uh, new hardware into the Quest uh, instance daemon, and also leave uh, some wish hardware in the uh, Android instance. Why we use the wish hardware in the Android instance? Because we try to avoid the modif uh, modify the source code in AOSP directly. We try to keep our AOSP clean. Uh. So this is the dedicated IO devices. For example, we have, we, let's we take the USB input as an example. Uh, 
uh, when we uh, plug uh, multiple USB display, this uh, USB input device, uh, the kernel will be helpful to create a multiple uh, device node. So choose the similar solution with the binder. We assign different uh, input uh, device nodes to different uh, Android instances. So uh, similar to the binder solution, we have nothing to change in the Android OSP. And uh, because uh, all devices are passed through, so there is no performance uh, overhead in these solutions. For I will sharing the, de uh, sharing the device, uh, share the device, it is more complicated. Let's we take a graphics and display as an example. For most of the hardware, there was only, uh, only one display controller in the hardware and uh, only one display controller driver in the kernel. And in most of the case, the display driver has a control driver has a requirement that only one process, main process can accept the driver. Uh, so, so that we need to create a display demo, uh, we need a display composer, which is running across instance, all instance, to interact with the display driver directly. So we have two modifications. One is a display compose driver. The other is the graph lock we have and the uh, hardware compose we have. So for the uh, graph, in the Android instance, when the Fling try to create a frame, frame buffer, it will call the graph lock we have and the graph lock we have will call the gray lock, uh, real graph lock have to allocate the buffer. At the same time, the graph lock we have will uh, get the FD for the uh, frame buffer and uh, share it with the display con composer. So the buffer has been shared between the display composer and the, uh, the Android instance. So Android instance can do any operation on the frame buffer without uh, as the orange design. So there is no nothing, there is no any overhead in the, this uh, uh, frame buffer operation. So when the Android instance try to uh, send this buffer to the display hardware, so it will send the display request. So currently, uh, so the hardware composer we have will capture the, uh, the display request and uh, uh, redirect this uh, display request to the display composer. And the display composer, which is running as a demo, will accept uh, all uh, display, display request from different Android instances and uh, merge them into a single display request and, uh, and then interact with the display controller driver. So with the display composer's help, we can avoid the conflict between different Android instances. We can avoid the uh, screen and the slash uh, and uh, uh, we can bring little overhead uh, on, on the graphics. Uh, try to support different uh, host OS. We also provide the different uh, backend uh, for uh, different backend uh, for different host OS. For example, we provide the Android X11 Wayland DIM backend for different uh, host OS. So okay, so uh, we have little patches uh, uh, in OSP to enable our solutions. But we have some enhancement patches. To, for example, the first one, the, the patches is to low memory killer. As we know, low memory killer is a mechanism provided by the Linux, which uh, will help to select the best candidate of the process to kill the, when the, the system's memory uh, pressure is very big, is very heavy. So the uh, AMS in the Android will will be responsible for updating the adage into the kernel and the kernel will select the best candidate uh, in the kernel and ask the user base to kill it. But for our, but this solution didn't provide, doesn't provide support for the multiple Android instances. So uh, we enhance it. We assign different weight according to the different property of the different instance. So uh, the uh, the, the, even the background uh, process in the high property uh, Android instance will, not, will be killed later. Because uh, if we want to provide the, 
high property service to the high property customers. So this is just a small change. Okay, just a five minutes. So we have introduced the, uh, the arc and the architecture and the implementation of our solutions as we gave a use case. So as we mentioned, uh, we have implemented uh, uh, POC for the cloud gaming with our solutions. This is a uh, uh, general arc for the cloud gaming. The left is the mobile device which uh, display the video streaming and uh, capture the user input and send it to the server. And in the server, we have GPU pool and CPU pool. Which GPU, GPU uh, CPU will be responsible for running the logic of the application, and the GPU will be running will be responsible for uh, rendering the encoding. And the right side is the game server, which is running the uh, game server logic. So this is a detailed uh, arc for our solutions. Uh, the left is a GPU poor, the right is a, uh, the left is a CPU poor, the right is a GPU poor. Uh, as, we, as we can see, uh, uh, the user, cap, user, ap, user action or user touch will be captured and sent to the server and will be injected to our Android instance, and which will drive the scenario change uh, in the uh, games. Then the GPU command uh, uh, for the games uh, will be captured uh, by our uh, graphics rendering module and uh, will be uh, sent to the uh, GPU pool uh, through the TCP IP uh, stack. And in the GPU pool, the uh, rendering receiver will depackage the uh, TCP IP uh, data and uh, send it to the GPU and uh, ask GPU to render and uh, encoding. Finally, the video streaming will be sent back to the G CPU server and uh, let the CPU server to uh, make the audio and video sync and send it back to the uh, device. So this is a real use case for the cloud gaming which we implement uh, in the Android container solutions. Okay, we have only one minute. So let me give you my summary. So we propose and provide a consolidated solution to consolidate many Android workloads in a single, comp single computing platform using container solutions, which is suitable for a lot of emerging use cases, such as cloud gaming, uh, automotive, and IoT. And we design a simple IoT sharing design uh, patterns to reduce the uh, overhead, uh, performance overhead. We implement, we design a low intrusive design to uh, reduce the maintain effort, and uh, we can upgrade our solutions in, uh, to one dev to another dev quickly. So next, uh, we plan to improve the isolation and security of our, our solutions because currently we just uh, use a container uh, solution to isolate the different Android instance, and we also try to make some POC to mix the different Linux-based OS. For, for, for example, we can make a, a ROS OS and Android uh, running as a single whole kernel. Okay, that's all. Any questions?